untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a Mardu colored Vampires deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring three copies of Edgar Charmed Groom, the 4 mana 4 4 legendary Vampire Noble from Crimson Vow, since other vampires we control get plus 1 plus 1, and when Edgar dies, return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control, meaning it will come into play as Edgar Markov's Coffin, a legendary artifact that at the beginning of our upkeep generates a 1 1 white and black vampire creature token with lifelink. We also put a bloodline counter on the coffin, and then if there are three or more counters on it, we remove them and transform it back into Edgar Charmed Groom, and it's not going to suffer from summoning sickness, so it can attack right away. So Edgar's a great top-end card in this vampire deck, being able to pump our vampires, and also gives us a little bit of staying power against removal and sweeper effects. Then another new addition from Crimson Vow is Surin the Mirthless. The 4 mana Planeswalker starts out at 4 loyalty. The plus 1 can provide card advantage by letting us take a look at the top card of our library. We may reveal that card and put it into our hand, and then lose life equal to its mana value, so it can reveal lands for free essentially, but we also have a bit of life gain to make up for the potential life loss, thanks to the minus 2 generating a 2-3 black vampire creature token with flying and lifelink. And then the minus 7 ultimate deals 13 damage to any target and we gain 13 life. Then we also have two copies of Henrika, the 4 mana 1 3 legendary vampire with flying, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, choose one mode that hasn't been chosen. Between each player sacrifices a creature, we draw a card at the cost of one life, or we can transform Henrika into the Infernal Seer, a 3 4 flyer with death touch and lifelink, and for 1 and double black, each creature we control with flying, death touch, and or lifelink gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. This also pairs very nicely with some of the other tokens in the deck. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, lots of usual suspects, but at 3 mana we also have Welcoming Vampire from Crimson Vow, the 2-3 Flying Vampire saying whenever one or more other creatures with power 2 or less enter the battlefield under our control, draw a card, and this only triggers once each turn. It's another nice source of card advantage. And then the main reason I think this deck is viable and ranked potentially right now is thanks to Vampire's Vengeance, a 3 mana instant speed sweeper dealing 2 damage to each non-vampire creature, and we also get to create a blood token which is an artifact we can pay 1 mana, tap and sacrifice, discard a card to draw a card, so it gives us a bit of a looting effect. So Vampire's Vengeance is incredibly effective against the various mono-white aggro decks, which tend to have lots of low toughness creatures that die to the 2 damage, then being an instant and being 1 mana cheaper than Crippling Fear makes a big difference, and can even be effective against a whole bunch of 1-1 one -one bird tokens out of the blue-red Epiphany combo decks. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck now, at 1 mana, full place of Falconrath Pitfighter, a 2-1 with additional upside. We also have two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst to take out creatures with mana value 2 or less, and with Kicker can take out larger creatures and even Planeswalkers, so whatever doesn't die to the 2 damage from Vengeance, we can potentially clean up with Blood Chief's Thirst. Then at 2 mana we've got more removal with Infernal Grasp to destroy any target creature at the cost of 2 life. And then to make up for the life loss, we also have Null Priest of Oblivion at 2 mana, a 2-1 with Menace and Lifelink, so it can consistently get in some points early. And then it also has Kicker for 4 additional mana, in which case when it enters a battlefield, if it was kicked, we can return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, so it gives us some nice recursion and a powerful late game play. Then a Vampire Socialite is a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with a menace, and when it enters a battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other vampire we control, and as long as an opponent lost life this turn, each other vampire we control enters a battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so fine play on turn 2, that will provide quite a few additional plus 1 counters. Then at 3 mana we mentioned a Welcoming Vampire, two copies of Nighthawk Scavenger, which has Flying, Death Touch, Lifelink, 3 Toughness and Power equal to 1, plus the number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyard, so it can often grow up to like 3 or 4 power on average. Then we've got our Vampire's Vengeance, and two copies of Florian, the 3-3 legendary Vampire Noble with First Strike, saying at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of life lost by your opponents this turn, get to exile one of those cards, and then we can play that exiled card this turn, so it can also provide additional card advantage. 
and then we've covered all our four mana cards. The mana base also includes two creature lands with Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which can turn into a 3-3 mana creature exiling cards from the opponent's graveyard. We've got a basic Swamp and basic Mountain in case of opposing copies of Field of Ruin, then all 12 pathways in our colors, as well as four copies of Haunted Ridge, one Shattered Sanctum and one Sundown Pass, as well as two copies of the Voltaren Estate, which can generate blood tokens as well as fix our mana when casting vampire creature spells. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Can actually curve Pit Fighter into Socialite thanks to our Voldaren Estate. And that will also provide white mana for welcoming vampires, so doing quite a bit of work here. Facing Lunark Veteran. Not really what we wanted to see, I think I still play the Pit Fighter for now. And then we'll keep Thirst as an answer for maybe some of the life gain payoff cards. Like the Moon Dancer, another veteran. So now they can even double block the Socialite if that shows up. I wouldn't be attacking. And yeah, then just need a third land for Welcoming Vampire. No land yet. Don't really want to Blood Chief's Thirst anything. Could trade Socialite for two of their creatures, I guess. And then we'll also be taking a bit of damage on the way back, but now with the Minister, our opponent would be able to attack past Socialite anyway. So we'll attack. Opponent probably takes two. And then... I think we just pass. Hoping for that land. Alright, Voice of the Blasts is a fine target for Thirst here. Bonus stays back. Okay, so let's kill the Voice. Bonus got a Valor Stance to make it indestructible. Alright, so we'll have to try again next turn. So... Should be able to kill it before it becomes indestructible at least. Opponent finds double Brutal Cathar, Valor Stance... And another Traveling Minister. So we're gonna take quite a hit here. We're at 8. And there's our land finally. And then... We'll thirst the voice now. And then I don't think we can really afford to attack. Opponent plays one Brutal Cathar. This would be a nice spot to find our Sweeper, dealing two damage to each non-vampire. Opponent still has Valor Stance to make one of their creatures indestructible, so blocking would not really work out in my favor, unless their last card is a land, in which case they could play another Cathar but then we might have seen them play it before attacking. So, yeah, I think I just have to take it, but probably just gonna end up dying here. Gonna draw our sweeper pretty much as our last out. Put on Dos have land into Brutal Cathar. So our opponent did lose life thanks to the Emiria, so we can actually use the Pit Fighter's ability. So let's sacrifice the one that's about to get removed in the hopes of finding our Sweeper. And then, which card don't we like? 
I guess keeping Henrika for the lifelink is nice. Florian I can cast without losing any life at the moment. Edgar might be the most ambitious one. Although this is quite powerful once it lands. Yeah, I guess we'll still get rid of Edgar here. Did not find our sweeper, sadly. So can I stay alive if I play Henrika and turn it into a 3-4 Death Touch lifelink right away? Probably still dead, but it's my only choice, really. Opponent sends the team. So we can block here, block here, prevent the most damage. And then, yeah, the lifelink would keep me alive. It's probably fine. Alright, turns to night. And then... Does Henrika want to attack, potentially? Could play Florian, attack with Henrika. And then potentially get an extra card of Florian as well. And there's a Vampire's Vengeance, although I wouldn't be able to cast it right now. So we'll take the free swamp. So the first strike on Florian should avoid too much uh, damage here. So I can block this, take two. Another Henrika, so if we play the front side here, we can have both in play at the same time. That being said, probably want to start by attacking, save they block. Although then I miss out on a Henrika trigger, basically. So I could play Henrika first, and then draw at the cost of one life, attack, and then take it from there. Sure, making each player sacrifice doesn't seem particularly great. So we could also attack first, see what we draw, and then go with Welcoming Vampire plus whatever Florian finds. Don't hate that idea. Florian finds another Socialite, probably. So can play Socialites and a nice big Welcoming Vampire. So we can block the Phantom even if they pump it twice. Alright, another Voice of the Blessed could be bad news. Now an 8-6. And we already went through Double Blood Chief's Thirst and put an Infernal Grasp on the bottom, so don't have access to those. Now Henrika does have Death Touch. And then we can potentially pump our Flyers as well. Might want to start by playing Henrika, drawing off Welcoming Vampire, and then... We can draw with Henrika as well. Ooh, nice. Vampire's Vengeance is exactly what we were hoping for. So we'll move to combats. And draw. And then, how many creatures can I afford to attack with? 
I can send maybe everyone but Henrika here. So maybe we can attack like this. See how they block and then cast a Vengeance afterwards, keeping our Death Toucher back to block Voice of the Blessed. And our opponent will potentially gain a ton of life here of the Phantom and their creatures dying. But we can maybe still make it so the Voice of the Blessed dies. Alright, perfect. So now we can let damage happen first and then cast our 2 damage sweeper to make sure that uh, our opponent doesn't gain any life with the Phantom to save the Voice of the Blast here. And we find some other goodies, so can cast a Vengeance that we found here from Exile instead. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Good 2-3-4 curve. Up against what looks like mono green. So I could play Pit Fighter here, and I guess there's no huge drawback to doing so. I guess it means that if I want to play my black 2-drop on curve, I wouldn't necessarily have white for Edgar, which is a drawback. But we could always draw another land here. Alright, so... Probably fine to play Null Priests. And then, yeah, we'll have to give up on potential white mana. But Florian can also help us find another one. Opponent red-green. And a Blizzard Brawl, gonna fight our Null Priest, at least we gain two life in the process. Alright, we'll attack and then play Florian. The ability is not gonna matter when we're tapped out, opponent goes for the trade anyway. And then Infernal Grasp can maybe clear a path for Florian to attack and find a white source. Alright, there's the white source. I think we still want to attack first. And then did not find a land, but I could go with either a scavenger or Henrika. Could also double spell Socialite and Infernal Grasp, keeping up Infernal Grasp in the opponent's turn. Kind of liking the scavenger, and then I can also play Pit Fighter alongside it. And then a scavenger will make it easier for Florian to keep providing card advantage. Plus, Death Touch is always good against a green deck. Alright, Tovalar shows up, but we've got a good block on the Naturalist. So just Swarm Shambler attacking for three, that's fine. Alrighty, so step one, I think we still want to attack first as opposed to playing Adgar. And then Scavenger attacks for sure. Does Florian want to attack? It is a decent blocker. So maybe it's a bit aggressive to send in Florian as well. Although then again, we also have an Infernal Grasp available, so we can always kill Tovalar if that becomes a problem. Sure. This also lets us dig deeper for Florian's ability. And we found Sorin, Vampire's Vengeance. Not looking too amazing right now. So we could go for Sorin, make a token. Or I could just take a land and then uh, play Adgar or Infernal Grasp. Let's go with Sorin. Annoyance. 
Arlen shows up. So the two four mana themed planeswalkers here facing off against each other. But it's been upset. So next Jordan Tovalar could threaten to transform all the werewolves. And they're just going face. I can double block Tovalar, lose my vampire token. Seems fine. And then our opponent's got a lot of two toughness creatures, so if we can find another sweeper, we can clean up nicely. So, step one might be to plus Sorin. Although there's still a chance I end up minusing, so maybe I should attack first with the scavenger. Although if I find a sweeper of the plus, I can make a very big attack, so let's plus first. And then we'll reveal socialites you wish to know my and then i'm fine with arlen living if that means we get to trigger florian all right no sweeper found a null priest and another socialite just playing a couple socialites here seems pretty good too or we could take the land and then play adgar and socialite it's probably even better So now our entire squad is pretty big. So Mardu Vampire is going toe to toe with red green werewolves. Back up Arlen. So glad we didn't waste too much time attacking her, even though now the tokens will enter with a plus one counter. But now the scavenger has six powers since a planeswalker. Also ended up in the opponent's graveyard, so opponent seems pretty dead. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Sequencing seems pretty straightforward. We need a red on turn one, hive on two, gives a socialite, and then we'll even have a Welcoming Vampire on three, so the mana works out quite nicely. Won't necessarily have double black for like a Sorin if that shows up. But now with the uh, estate can maybe help with that as well. So hit for two, play Socialites. So now if I play the Voldaren Estates, I'll have to pay a life to play Welcoming Vampire, but that way I keep this as a second black source to maybe activate Hive or cast a Sorin if we find one. So let's attack first and then play Welcoming Vampire. Seem to be up against a Blue Rat's control, maybe Epiphany deck. Might get countered by a Jory Disruption. It does not. Alright, at 4 toughness, it's not the easiest to kill with burn spells. So I've got a nice bit of pressure on the play. So this is one of the better starts we could have hoped for against the control deck. And now we have to decide how we want to sequence our creatures in terms of drawing cards with the welcoming vampire or getting counters with the socialite. And then our life total shouldn't matter too much in this matchup. Right, Prismari Command kills Socialites. So now might as well attack first and then play Socialite. And then how do I want to tap my mana? This is probably okay. It's not like the Pit Fighter's ability is likely to be relevant. All right, more counters. I guess there's like an edge case scenario where opponent shocks in one of the three damage lands and I can still use a pit fighter in response to a sweeper. So I guess we'll keep up additional red mana. 
Could have also decided to preemptively sacrifice our 2-drop here in case our opponent has a burn down the house next turn and deals 5 damage to everything, in which case we at least got to discard and draw. Alright, it's just going to be an expressive iteration. And then next turn we could also animate Hive to potentially get in the last points. Because it doesn't look like our opponent's likely to survive unless they've got multiple bounce spells. Alright, divide by zero welcoming vampire leaves them dead to Hive with the Eye Tyrant. Alright, sweet, so there we have it. An excellent start on the play against Blue Red. Managed to get the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a keepable hand here. A little bit of interaction, a couple early vampires, and then a Sorin to top off our curve. Up against an aggressive vampire deck, it looks like. So, do I want to thirst on one? I think we're just going to go with Tapland instead and then potentially kill their 2-drop. If not, I can Null Priest on 2. And then on 3 we can Socialite plus Thirst. The Pit Fighter is going to deal quite a bit of damage in the meantime. But if I want to Thirst on 1, I won't be able to play my 2-drop on Curve. So it's a pretty tough decision. Of course we can imagine our opponent maybe having some removal to kill our own Null Priest, in which case... It's not going to gain me any life. Turn to Epicure, so they do have a bit of a, a blood theme as well here. Alright, so now do I still want to play a 2-drop or would we rather kill the Pit Fighter? I think I'm fine playing the Null Priest. And then we can maybe connect with it by killing our opponent's creature next turn. Our deck is not going super deep on the whole blood synergy, but uh, that's certainly something we could explore in a future build that plays more of the new blood vampires. Opponents discards Vampire's Vengeance, not going to be great in this matchup, but I'm glad they came to the same conclusion that it's a well-positioned card right now. Alright, play with fire kills my 2-drop. So in hindsight... Killing Pit Fighter turn 1 might have worked out better. So it goes. And really hoping for land number 4. So we can get our powerful 4 drops going. Infernal Grasp kills Socialite. And another Pit Fighter, so our opponent managed to draw 3 of the 4 Pit Fighters here. Surin would still do a great job of stabilizing us right now. Fine trading. Opponent can sacrifice the Epicure, discard a card and draw. And it looks like they had a fourth pit fighter in hand. That's impressive. Alright, found white mana even. So the Harvester can kill any of my creatures next turn by giving them... I guess it's only minus two, minus two. So three Toughness Vampire could survive it. Could get greedy, play like a Welcoming Vampire first. Which can then draw me a ton of cards with Sorin as well. Although just going Sorin, make a Vampire token seems reasonable. Especially given that we have a backup Sorin. So our opponent might use a lot of resources to kill my first Sorin. And then if Sorin survives, I'm pretty happy going Welcoming Vampire minus two Sorin once again. Alright, they've got a Maid of Dishonor. So now the Harvester can kill my Vampire token and Pit Fighter can finish off Sorin. So now what's the play? I could play Henrika, turn it into a Death Toucher right away, so it can trade for the Maid. 
which can otherwise drain me to death with the ability as well. Yeah, playing certain and minusing doesn't seem great. I guess I can chump the maid, but then Pitfighter would be able to finish off Surin, unless they both go face, in which case I could chump and then take two, and then next turn go Welcoming Vampire minus two Surin again draw card. Yeah, I think I would rather just get the Death Touch lifelink creature going. And then hope they're out of removal. And if the maid stays back to just drain us to death, we can take a different approach. So I'm happy with the trade here. Could mean that they have another copy in hand. Opponent let the trade happen. Maybe they forgot about Death Touch. Adagar's not bad. Or we could Sorin and Minus to set up our Welcoming Vampire again. Both are quite reasonable. Let's go with Sorin. Get that lifelink going. And then play with fire and kill Sorin, fair enough. At least her opponent's empty-handed, so they can start sacrificing blood tokens to improve their draw. But we still have quite a bit of action in hand. Could even kick an old priest at some point. Opponent playing out their land means they won't be discarding with the blood tokens, but they can maybe make additional blood tokens with their Darren Estates. Thirsts could come in handy. So what are we thinking now? There's no real need to kill the Pit Fighter. Could just play Edgar Attack for three, even though that potentially nerfs my Welcoming Vampire drawing cards in the future. The Null Priest we would probably want to kick at some point to get back Henrika, for instance. So, sure, let's play Edgar. And then even if they kill Edgar somehow, we'll get the Coffin to generate more tokens, which also play well with the Vampire. Alright, 3-1 that cannot block, but can return by sacrificing blood tokens and can generate more in the process. So, might want to keep my 3-4 lifelinking token on defense to block the Forebear, and then for now Edgar could still attack, and I could play Welcoming Vampire and hang on to Null Priest, which we're close to kicking. Could certainly take a more aggressive approach, but it's somewhat dangerous to let the opponent generate a ton of blood tokens if they find more payoffs for it. Another Maid of Dishonor here would be quite threatening with all those blood tokens they can sacrifice to drain for two. There's the two drop that can transform and turn blood tokens into flyers. So plenty of reasons to hang on to Blood Chief's Thirst. Opponents burning our face off. Fair enough. They don't have any great attacks. Alright, and there's my land, so I can kick Null Priest of Oblivion now. So, what's my plan? Get back Henrika, in which case I want to do this main phase one. That seems fine. We even get to draw. And then, could transform right away. Although it's already a good blocker for the Forebear, so it can maybe even afford to draw. 
And then we'll start getting more aggressive. Alright, so now at 11 life I feel pretty safe. Alright, good game. We got lucky not to draw our own Vampire's Vengeance here, which would have been pretty awkward in the matchup. But I guess you can always discard it to a blood token later. Alright, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand? Missing white for Welcoming Vampire. But we can curve Pit Fighter into Null Priest with Grasp as removal. I think I'll try it. Opponent on the red-green. There's my white mana, perfect. So, I'm okay trading Pit Fighter for Sentinel. Especially if our opponent has something like Magda early, we might want to interfere with Infernal Grasp. But I'll play Null Priest for now. All right, no turn to Magda at least, but a Ranger class instead. And then probably want to just attack and then play Welcoming Vampire. Opponent trades, that's fine. And then next turn I could Null Priest and Infernal Grasp, draw with a Welcoming Vampire. There's a Magda, so that's Probably gonna get taken out here. Opponent can level up Ranger class. So, probably want to play the Null Priest, see what else we draw first. Florian could come in handy. So there is an argument for killing Sentinel over Magda. Overall, killing Magda is probably the safer play. Alright, let's see if they've got a Chariot. It's gonna be the partners instead, growing the sentinel. Yeah, that is kind of annoying since now they can block my welcoming vampire, they've got a first striker to block the null priest. Might still be worth it to play Florian attack with both null priests, since at least one of them will connect, letting me exile the top two cards. And then we can hopefully find more answers or creatures to draw cards with welcoming vampire. That's not going to work because of Menace. Alright, Henrika. Sadly, we wouldn't be able to cast, so that's painful. So now we're going to start to get in a bit of trouble. And Goldspan Dragon. Can accumulate some counters as well. So, yeah, in hindsight, could have maybe let Magda live, keep our instant speed removal for the partners, would have left us in a slightly better spot. And then can't even double block the partners because of first strike, they would kill Welcoming Vampire. And now that's going to start putting three counters on all their creatures as well. Just to land the draw. So yeah, it's not looking good. Can attack with Welcoming Vampire and Null Priest to desperately find something with Florian, but even our 2 damage sweeper at this point wouldn't be enough to save us. And if I attack with everyone, they would just single block, single block, take 2. But guess we'll still make this play since we're pretty desperate. Did not draw the cards in the right order, otherwise we might have been able to play Henrika this turn, make each player sacrifice and make a bit of progress.
thirst we can still put to good use. And then I probably kill the partners over Goldspain. Another Sentinel. So now our best bet is stringing together some card advantage with Welcoming Vampire. Well, I guess we can make a Blood Token and discard land. That'll draw a card. Okay, Scavenger actually could trade for Goldspan Dragon, so... We're still pretty far behind, but... At least we're not 0% to win. Opponent can start playing creatures off the top with Ranger class. Hive can get in there and pick up a counter so it can attack past Florian's first strike. So, could still double block Hive with Florian and Pitfighter and lose both. Is that worth it? it might be. Deals with the opponent's threats, although they do have another Hive, although I guess they could start activating both thanks to Goldspan Dragon. Doesn't look like Florian's going to trigger anytime soon, so sure I'll double block. I guess the drawback is a Scavenger won't draw card now, as it's up to 3 power. But so it goes. And then we can still make a blood token here, end of turn. Infernal Grasp, my Scavenger, means Goldspan can attack, and that's probably going to be game here. Alright, GG's. So we never really seem to have a great chance this game. Our threats and answers just didn't line up the way they should have. Null Priest, which we could currently kick, so I guess we're not completely dead yet. Could get back Nighthawk Scavenger, that's probably my best bet here. Are we dead to Hive of the Eye Tyrant getting activated? Still have a bit of lifelink to work with, but... Uh... Edgar shows up just in time to see the uh, final attack.
So yeah, vampires at least put up a pretty good fight here, not going down easy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is pretty slow, missing white mana currently and a fourth land, which is going to be pretty important. But if we draw any other spell we can cast before turn four and draw fourth land, this should be fine. So still pretty good odds. Alright, so it desperately needs white mana now. And if we're up against mono white, I'll take that sweeper as well before aspirants. Puts the entire team out of range. Looks like green-white humans instead. So that deck goes a little bit bigger, so our two damage sweeper not going to be as impactful as I would like it to be. At least Death Touch is still good. Although we could see a Brutal Cathar. Yep. And the 2 3 tokens from Soren don't line up particularly well here. Henrika's not the worst. Though I want to play as Soren first, potentially. If I play Henrika, could make the opponent sacrifice. And then we would sacrifice our Null Priest as well. Or I could start making an army of flying tokens, which we can also pump up with the transformed Henrika eventually. Although that's going to take a while. Tough call. If I make a 2-3, they can pump Cathar to attack past it. So it's not really going to do a great job of blocking. They might send some resources at Surin to take it out which does buy me a little bit of time. So it's a close call here. I think going Surin first might still be better. Under my watch, and then I could leave Null Priest back to maybe help double block if they pump the Brutal Cathar. Tildas, incredibly scary. So well-timed Vampire's Vengeance could still do some good work here. Depending on the situation. Opponent pumps Vanguard. And attacks face. Guess we'll take it. And there's Vampire's Vengeance, right on cue. Alrighty, so... Probably don't want to let my opponent untap with all that Katilda mana, since then they can just pump the Brutal Cathar out of range. So... What I can do is attack with Null Priests. On the off chance they block with Aspirant, but I guess Menace makes that a little bit more complicated, sadly. Yeah, not sure what else they might have for 3 mana, some sort of instance. I guess it's worth it to attack with Null Priest if I don't plan on chumping with it, which I don't think I am. Opponent takes it. And then I'll make another token here. And that gets back our Nighthawk Scavenger. Can still use the blood token. So Vampire's Vengeance potentially saves the day. Thalia's fine. So now our flyers can take over. This attack I can just trade for Scavenger, that's also fine. can discard one of my white cards that I currently cannot cast, in which case probably a welcoming vampire goes. 
Uh, Castle Dracula gives me access to white mana now. So have a couple options. Could play a Soren for five mana. Could play Adgar, which pumps the team. Although I still can't attack Null Priest into Thalia. Could play Henrika, make the opponent sacrifice. We sacrifice potentially Null Priest. So a lot of pretty solid options. I guess Soren make another token and then next turn pump the team with Adgar. Seems pretty good. And our opponent might expend more resources trying to kill Soren. Torrens can generate more tokens on the ground, but the flyers are going to make the difference. So if both ground creatures attack, Adgar could win the game thanks to the menace on Null Priest. But only Thalia attacks. Fair enough. Uh, I guess we'll let Soren go. And then by pumping the Null Priest, we force them to trade one of their two other creatures for our Menacer. And then between Luminarch, Aspirant, and Torrens, which is Carrier. I guess it doesn't matter because our opponent has given up. Alright, so nice comeback here from the Vampires. So even though this wasn't your typical mono-white aggro, still got to show the power of Vampires Vengeance in multiple matchups, especially against base white creature decks. But yeah, overall, quite happy with how this Mardu Vampires deck turned out. Could have also built a black-white snow control deck with a few copies of Edgar Markov thrown in, since that was our build-around card for today's deck, but that would have been pretty boring compared to what we ended up with instead. And as I mentioned in the gameplay, still definitely excited to try out a more blood-focused build of vampires, like the one we faced in one of today's games as well. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.